So this will be part 2 of our React tutorial and just as you know we are trying to build a React user interface to connect to this application we already built or we are already building using Spring Boot. So we have this application, we have not completed it, we are still building on it. If you are not following this tutorial for building this application, please check the description box, you can follow it and it's very easy. So the idea is that this application we built in Spring Boot using Bootstrap UI we are trying to now build a React UI to be able to connect to this application and be able to fetch data from this application. So there's a reminder. So I'm going to put away Spring Boots. And remember, React is for building rich user interface application, okay? So in part one, we actually set up React. We uh, explained the, fi the file structure of a React application. And today we are going to be talking about React components. React component is simply a piece of code. So make no mistake about it. The name seems to be difficult uh, to be kind of confusing. It's simple, a piece of code that you've written, but there's a bit more to it. So let's talk about it by looking at the website because I have everything explained in my website. So I'm, I'm going to explain very little and then we go right into the demo to actually practice uh, to demonstrate how to use the uh, the component. Again, I'm going to remind you to subscribe to my channel. If you've not subscribed, hit on the subscribe button below so you don't miss any update from me. If you have any challenges following any of my lessons, please leave a comment below. Let me know personally and I'm going to give you the support you need. So now look at the screen. You can see that we have a typical uh, layout of a web application. We have the header, we have the sidebar, we have the main content and we have the footer. Okay, so this is kind of uh, the layout of a, an application, of a typical application. Now a component in React represents these various components or these various parts of a user interface. Alright, so let's now give a definition. A React component is simply a part of the user interface. So we have the header component, the sidebar, the main content, the footer, all of them in React they are called component. And we may also have a component that holds or nests all these other sub components okay so the question now is how does the component relate to code so at this point let's go back to the react application and let's look at the structure of the let's open the files and see how it relates to this ui uh in react okay now let's look at this place it says a component code is normally placed in a JavaScript file. So that's what you should also know. A component code is a JavaScript code. For example, the app component, which, which I just closed right now, is placed in the app.js file. Let me just make some room here. And uh, so in summary, a component is represented by a code in the .js file. So when we open the app.js, you can see the content of this file. This file represents the app component, and that is what you see when we run this application. I'm going to run this application at this point. So I'm going to say, um, see the first app, and I'm going to say um, npm start, okay? You already know this. So let's talk about two types of components. One of them is state stateful component and a stateless component. Now this app component you are seeing here, uh, is it a stateful component or stateless component? Or let's say, is it a functional component or a class component? Let's talk about the two. A functional component is simply a JavaScript function. So if you know how to write a function or a sub procedure that returns something, you've written a component. In case of React, when you write a JavaScript code that returns a HTML, you've written a component. So a functional component is a JavaScript code or JavaScript function that returns a HTML that is responsible for rendering a part of a browser or part of the UI, okay? So for example, when you have a function like this that returns welcome Kyneton, uh, this is a typo here is a component and is a functional component. Now this function when executed renders welcome kind son to the browser. Now let's look at the app component. It's a functional component as well. It returns a number of things. It returns, we have all of these, uh, it's rendered in the browser, this div tag and stuff like that, okay? So you can see a return statement right here. And now 
a functional component receives, receives properties known as props. I see I'm not going to be talking so much about the theories at this point. So let's now write a functional component and see how it, is, it displays or it controls our UI, okay? For now, I run this application and it's coming up. So I'm going to create a JavaScript file. A functional component is simply a JavaScript file. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it um, welcome.js. That's the name of the file. So let me call it welcome.js. And we are simply going to write a function inside this code. To write a JavaScript function in React, you first have to import import React from React. Okay, so this is the first line you need to use, and you simply write a JavaScript function. You already know how to do this if you know a bit of JavaScript, but if not, just follow along. Function welcome, that's the name of the function, and I give it a body, and it's simply going to return uh h1 and i'm going to say uh let me just say hello kind son hello kind son okay so i've written this functional component but before it can be used in the ui we need to export it by saying export default and give the name of the function the name of the function is welcome so at this point we can use it in a ui because it's a javascript file now, after exporting it, we can use it as a UI. And I'm going to save everything, just save all. But now it's not, it can't appear in the UI for now because I've not used it. So for now, this is our UI, okay? So let's now go to include, let's now go to include this component to the UI so that it can actually render in the UI. So I'm going to go to app.js. I told you app.js represents the, the UI uh, the current UI that you can see. So inside the app.js, I'm simply going to, uh, so the instruction is also here, so let's follow it. In the render method of the app component, write a custom tag uh, and write, okay, so I think I missed out a step. Okay, so, okay, so the, we, are, we need to import the component we wrote into this app into this very component so we are adding the functional component we wrote this welcome as a sub component of the app component so i'm going to say import uh welcome from uh and then slash okay slash welcome So it's going to be dot slash welcome. Okay, so welcome.js. Okay, so this is what you should do. Um, import welcome from welcome. For now, it's not being, let's see, it's never used. Okay, so I've imported it. Now I'm going to now use it in the browser uh, to display in the UI. So to do that, you simply use a tag the name welcome and slash welcome so at this point the the functional component is live i'm going to save it and let's go to check uh our ui so i'm going to save all and it recompiles and we are going to go back to the ui to see uh what happens so cannot rec uh, cannot welcome the js uh, okay so we have let's see Okay, take note that we did not place this welcome.js inside the SRC folder. So everything you are going to be writing, all your components has to be inside the SRC folder. So simply drag it and drop it right inside the SRC folder. I'm going to move it. And at this point, I'm going to save file, save all. And I'm going to go back to uh, the UI. And you can see that it renders in the UI, hello, kind son, as you can see right here. So if you do this successfully, you've created your first co uh, a functional component. Now I would like you to play around, write more functions and make them display. Now I can actually uh, uh, shorten this by using a short form of the, 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 the custom tag. So I'm going to save. That is fine. Everything is okay. Now we also have the class component. A class component are simply regular classes. So um, I don't, okay, so we have, 
Okay, so we are simply going to write a class component so that you can see how it is different from the functional component. And I recommend that you use functional component because it's quite easy. So let's write a class component that does exactly the same thing as this functional component that we've written. Okay. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to so this is a the this is the, the this is the the syntax or the the structure of a functional component. So let's write a functional component that does exactly the same thing. All right. So let's go to let's name the the, the file. Um, uh, let's name it uh, hello.js. Okay. Okay. So I put it right inside the the inside the react um, inside the inside the src folder so here i'm going to say import now you need to add, modify a bit the import statement so it's going to be import react and you're also going to import component uh from react okay so this is a the a bit um the little modification you need to make a functional component starts with the word class. Sorry, a class component starts with the word class. Hello. Extends, extends, and it's have to extend, uh, extends component. Class, hello, extends component, and you have this, okay? So, okay, good. So, we are simply going to say render, again, the functional uh, the class component must have a render method so the render method actually does the work and the render method simply returns the code you want to see so you see if a class component is a bit more complicated so a, a bit more complicated than uh, the the functional one so i'm going to say render render and i'm going to say return h1 and I'm going to say class component. Okay. And again, we are also going to export it. Exports uh, defaults. Hello. Okay. Def uh, default hello. So it's going to be like this. And let's go to the app component and add it so that it will be able to render it in the browser. So again, I'm going to. I added the welcome here. Now I'm going to add it right inside the app header. So you can actually add it anywhere so i'm going to say uh before then i need to import it import uh hello from uh hello dot js okay okay this is fine you can actually remove the js ending there is nothing wrong with that so again i'm going to use a custom uh, tag so i'm going to say hello so at this point, that functional component becomes part of the UI. So now I'm going to save everything, and then we are going to see whether it renders in the UI. So I'm going to save file, save all, and it's going to recompile, and it says failed to compile. Let's see. So again, I place the, this fun the component outside the SRC folder. So I'm going to move it into the SRC folder. Yeah, I'm going to move it right into the SRC folder and I'm going to save everything at this point. Save all. Okay, so you can see where the error is coming from. So I need to put this dot right here. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to save everything. Save everything. So if you go back here now, you can see that we have class component displayed right here. Okay, so these are about components. So I want you to kind of, let me see, I think I have some exercise in my website. Now, what is the difference between the class and the functional component and when to use which one? Okay, so let me see. So functional components are simpler. Uh, they do not use this, the this keyword. They, they use, so they solve problems without using state. They are stateless. They are responsible for the UI. You use it whenever it's possible. But class component is more feature rich. They maintain their own private data, private data and also state. They are more complex. But there is also some update to the React uh, framework, the React library, 
I'm going to mention. So that is this. As a new feature, state can also be used in functional component. So I recommend you watch the video, okay, which is this one. So this is great. So I'm going to be stopping here and I'm going to recommend you subscribe if you've not subscribed. In the next part, we are now going to be talking about JSX, which is very important. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.